Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're called out to have a look at this pond. It's about 6,000 litres. The owners have just come back from uh, being away for a week and they found that the, one of the fish has died and they're seeing these little disc-like critters on the surface, sort of cruising on the surface of the fish that was dead. Uh, if we have a close look at these fish in the pond, you can see that some of them do have these little sort of disc-like organisms. Uh, these are known as argulus, also colloquially known as fish lice. Um, so this will be a fairly simple uh, treatment, but we need to check a few things because it's going to affect what our treatment regimen is going to be. Um, and while we're here, we'll also be testing for the water quality as well as testing uh, for other sorts of active parasites that may be introduced at the same time that these fish lice were introduced to the pond. Some of the things that we need to know before we start treating is to be able to exclude other sorts of parasites, plus also we need to know about the water quality parameters. So the two main ways of treating for fish lice, one is using organophosphate like trichloroform. Uh, that sort of drug can break down very quickly if the pH is very high, so then the alternative to use is diflubenzuron, which is a chitin synthesis inhibitor. Uh, it does kill the parasite when it tries to molt into the next stage of its, in its life cycle. And that second drug I mentioned would have a slower uh, response time, so uh, we need to sort of gauge to see how quickly how we need to knock these parasites down, uh, or are we able to use the more gentler technique and wait for about three days before you actually see the effects. So let's go do some water testing and fish testing and we'll come up with a treatment plan. All right, well, as expected, uh, plus there's a lot of, sort of algae in there. Um, the water quality is always gonna read pretty much optimal. Uh, the other thing as well, we're, we're seeing that the pH is actually very high. It's sitting at about eight and a half to nine. Uh, basically, that is a combination of two things. One is that this whole pond is actually made of concrete. There's some bits that are, the sealant has come off and you can see here uh, the waterfall that's again concrete. So that's going to leach out some carbonates and that's going to bring the pH up, up to about eight and a half. Uh, the other thing that's actually because it's with limestone and cement, it doesn't really push the pH above eight and a half all that much, but um, the combination with the algae doing photosynthesizing in the daytime is going to use up all the carbon dioxide that's in the water, reducing the acidity and pushing the pH to be a lot higher. And so in this case, if we we're going to treat for lice, we definitely would not be able to use trichloroform because that would break down so quickly that it's not going to have any effect at all on the fish. And we're lucky enough that the fish infestation at the moment with most of them is actually quite low. And so we can be afforded a bit of time to use the slower acting type of medicine known as diflubenzuron. Now if you don't get, if you don't have access to diflubenzuron, your veterinarian may be able to use another chitin synthesis inhibitor called lufeniron, which is used a lot in small animal medicine with dogs and cats. I'll just get you to come closer. Uh, this goldfish has actually been through the the worst out of all, all the guys that are in the pond. You can initially you'll notice that the fins are all frayed. Uh, you can also notice the body condition uh, around the head. It looks a lot more rough. And if you do feel the fish itself, you feel that some parts aren't as mucusy as normal. And we come really close and have a look on this side here, the abdomen. You can see there's a little bit of redness. That is a sign of um, of something sort of biting, biting the fish. And uh, if we have a close look at the gills when we're examining it, you can see that's really very pale. Um, so I think this this little guy has um, got a combination of uh, either combination of chronic uh, parasitic in infestation, uh, as well as I think it's not really competing well with the rest of the fish in getting enough food. 
So the owner is aware of this and does try to feed him in a separate uh, position, but that's not always uh, possible. Uh, these guys, uh, they have pretty ravenous sort of appetite. Yeah. So if they've got a gill bopsy, I'm skipping the spread from him uh, over here. So we're just gonna examine this. Good. So that's good news. There's no internal parasites uh, or external parasites on the microscopic examination. Uh, but if you have a close look down the microscope, it's going to show you how the gills, uh, how pale gills or anemic gills look like down the microscope. You can see it's not very red. And we'll compare that with another set of gills in a second. Here is a gill biopsy from a normal healthy goldfish and you can see that the blood vessels in the that's in the gills is coursing with a lot of red blood cells it's packed with it uh, with no spaces that are pale and there's also no excess mucus overlying the little finger like projections from the gills this is what a healthy gill should look like Let's get a close-up of here. You see there's several parasites on his fins. And um, just there, they're sort of crawling around. So let's get you to touch him to focus. Yeah. Okay. Little things crawling around. Yeah, there seem to be more of them present. It's on the fins, little tiny ones. Yeah, on the ventral part of the body, so they must be taking some sort of shelter. Bottom. And yeah, his gills are also quite pale as well, so it should really look like tomato sauce color, but this one is a little bit more pale than the normal tomato sauce. Perfect. So I think all we're dealing with here are just fish like so that's gonna be a good easy thing to um, to treat. So just that you have a close look of the Parasite. So, do you want to come and have a look yeah. as well? Yeah, so that's the parasite. I guess that yeah. that sort of size you can see with your naked eye. Yeah. Oops. And then there are smaller ones. These ones I grabbed from his tail. Yeah. So every time they molt from this small size to a larger size, that's when the drug that we're going to use is going to oh, kill okay. them. Yeah. yeah. These uh, two large things are the oral sucker discs. Uh, they just latch onto your fish and it's hard for them to swim off away from them. It just su it's like suction cups. And these are their little eyes. Now in this gill biopsy you can see that it's not as red as what a normal healthy gill should look like and so this one is also moderately anemic. Okay, uh, the dose rate for diphenbenzeron is somewhere between 0 0.03 to 0 0.1 milligram per liter. Um, because we can't get a super accurate uh, measurement of the water volume because of the sort of unusual shape to the pond, uh, we're going to use a dose rate that's somewhere in the middle of the two. So we're going to use 0 0.05 milligrams per liter. For this pond, uh, we're gonna, that equates to about less than one mil, so we're using 0 0.84 mils of the drug. The drug is really strong, uh, so, and it is also, I guess, a drug that is 
So it's like, like a, some sort of an endocrine disrupting type uh, chemical. So we don't want, we want to make sure that we wear our personal protective equipment. So we're just going to draw up the amount of drug that we need. Let's start just less than a mil. And we have to make sure that we don't make any hot spots of the drug, which may become toxic to the fish. We're going to add some pond water to our watering can. And we're going to be able to pre-dilute this drug. And once it's pre-diluted into, so this is about 10 liters of water, we're going to distribute that evenly through the pond. But first, we'll have to turn off the UV light. Alright, so very simple. Uh, you could ask the owner which one it is. Basically, they probably will forget which one it is anyway to turn off. So, you find the wire that's leading to the UV light. And it seems to be this thicker one. You just trace that along its path. Under. Yep, so here it is. And what you want to make sure is as well, that's an indicator light that the UV is on. So when you unplug it or turn it off, that should turn off as well. That's how you know the UV is off. Okay, so now we just pour our medicated water. We want to make sure that we try to avoid the fish. Because we're using such a low volume of medicine, we want to make sure that we get every last bit of it out of the sides of the watering can so that they get their actual full dose into our pond. Okay, so how did the fish lice get into our pond in the first place? Well, there's quite often what I've seen in my experience is that it's usually water birds that bring them in. Um, quite close by to this property is a natural lake where there are a lot of water birds around and it's not unusual for them to be just visiting ponds where they see any sort of reflection uh, at this, uh, from this when they're flying along sky and they'll always just visit any water body uh, that they can find, uh, especially when it's peaceful and calm. And if they see fish around, they know that the coast is obviously uh, is going to be a sort of a safe place for them to be around if they see fish swimming around. Uh, fish are probably one of the first creatures uh, that will try to dart away and try and hide away if the coast if, if there is any threat around the area. So with our dose of diflubenzuron. A single dose should be sufficient. Um, the half-life of the drug is about one month. So if we're using it at 0.05 mils per liter or milligram 0.05 milligrams per liter, it'll take about half a month before it drops down to below the lowest end of the effective dose rate. Um, and that should be able to catch all the parasites. Uh, that you know, the eggs developing and all the immature stages as well. Uh, if you do want to top it up, uh, you could do so in a month's time at the sort of the low end of the dose rate at 0.03 milligrams per liter, um, and that way you are going to be sure that you're not going to over medicate or expose them to too much medication. So. Yep, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.